Hi, my name is Carlos Felipe Bandeira. I am postgraduate student in the Pontifical Catholic University of Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. Today I will present the work uh, Sensitivity Analysis of Load Frequency and Block Cycles on the Fatigue Mean Limits Measurements by Thermographic Method. This work was done by me and by the professors Jaime Tupiaçu de Castro, Florian Pradelli, and Paulo Pedro Kennedy. I would like to thank you for the, this uh, online congress and for the opportunity to show to you uh, one of the work that we are, we are doing today in PUCI in Brazil. So I will start with a brief introduction about this work. So let's talk about fatigue limit. So fatigue limit is an important material property for design purpose. Uh, the fatigue limit is the property defined by the stress below which no fatigue cracks are nucleated inside the material. So this is very, very important for design purpose because if we make the design considering this fatigue limit, then we can ensure that the part will not break uh, during its life by fatigue. There are several methods to measure the fatigue limit in the laboratory. We know that there are other many, many values in the literature, but if we want to use the fatigue limit as um, uh, for design purpose, it's very important to measure it in the laboratory. However, many, many methods uh, available in the science today are very expensive and time consuming. Uh, first, we can uh, say about the Wohler method. The so called Wohler method, the traditional method, uh, is very, very expensive and time consuming. But other accelerated methods like Dixon, Pro, Staircase, Up and Down. So, why develop uh, another? method uh, to measure fatigue limits because we want to measure this material property faster and cheaper way so i want to make a measurement in few days maybe in few hours so uh, the thermographic method was developed by his at all in about 20 years ago so the main idea of the thermographic method is to measure the temperature variation on specimen surface under loading. For higher loads, that's it, higher loads, higher than fatigue limit, during the cycles, during the test, it's possible to see a temperature variation increasing on the specimen surface. This is acceptable because we know that fatigue is an image process. Uh, the fatigue process is composed by the dislocations, displacements inside the material. And dislocations um, spend heat during this process. So it's very, very acceptable. But for stress at which Though temperature variation or significant temperature variation is measured at on temperature surface, on specimen surface, we can define then this as the fatigue limit of material. So this is a theory very, very acceptable. However, to implement the thermographic method, it depends on the number of block cycles of first thermophase. What is the first thermophase? If we look to this figure, to the first figure, we can see the temperature, maximum temperature along the number of cycles during an experimental test. For higher stress, higher is the temperature variation. The first part of these curves is defined as the first thermophase. So the N1 is the number of cycles to achieve the first thermophase for the material. This is the number of cycles used for each block of cycles during the thermographic approach. So it's really important to define this number of cycles for each material. Can I define, for example, 1000 cycles or 
100 cycles for each block of cycles for each stress amplitude? This is a question. In another way, we know that the thermographic approach depends on the temperature measurements on the spasma surface. And we know that this temperature measurement, uh, the, the temperature variation, is very sensitivity to the load frequency. For higher load frequencies, higher is the, the grain uh, relative motion. Higher is the friction acting inside material during the damage process. So it could become easier to detect, to read, to map the temperature field on spasma surface for higher load frequencies. So, but if I want to measure fatigue limit in a faster way, so I want to use the lower number of block cycles and the highest load frequency. Can I do that? Even talking about a fatigue with no corrosion environment? So that is the main questions of this work. To answer these questions, we performed a sensitivity analysis based on these two factors, the number of block cycles and the load frequency, and we use that a design of experiments to understand the, the impact of both factors on the fatigue limit measurement. So about the design of experiments. In this work, we are using a design of experiment based on the full factor design with two factors and two degrees of freedom. Uh, four tasks is required, are required, combining the minimum and maximum values of each factor. The, this full factor design uh, uh, gives to us a linear response function, as we can see here, the linear response function with four uh, four coefficients, a0, a1, a2, a12, and this coefficient could be obtained with the uh, solving this less square method problem, uh, where we have we, we have to to input the results from the task, and we have this matrix from the full factor design to solve the problem. This is the design matrix for this problem. In addition, to see and to make sure that we can uh, we can trust on the results of the response function, we use it in uh, analysis of variance just to make any statistical uh, analysis to understand if these results are good or not. So the comparison between the response function and analytical results and the, 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 the comparison with this response function with the, with the results, experimental results. So the scope of tasks to perform this uh, design of experiment. So to measure the temperature variation, we use a thermographic key uh, infrared camera from FLIR. We performed all the tasks, all fatigue tasks using a rotating bending machine. So with zero means stress, uh, full cycle. The specimen was machined from a cold drop carbon steel, so uh, very, very strength material. And the steady demand, demand was based between 7,000 and 10,000 rotations per minute for the load frequency and 2,500 to 7,500 uh, cycles for each block. Here we can see a table with all the seven tasks. The first four tasks represent the combinations of the, of the full factor design. And the last three tasks was performed in the center of the study domain, just to increase the robustness of the results. The results. First, I would like to share with you a video from the FLIR, from the camera, where we can see a test, a fatigue test, for a stress amplitude uh, less than, lower than the fatigue limit. As we can see, no temperature variation is identified during the time of the test. 
You can see also here in this graphic, no temperature variation, maybe only uh, elastic variation or waste. Now we can see a test with a stress amplitude higher than fatigue limit, and as we can see, after the start of the start of the test, something starts to happen on the specimen, and we can see a temperature variation more significant. This is the result from a damage process. This is the result from a fatigue damage process. Here, I show to you two graphics. These are the graphics that we use to perform the fatigue limit determination. So in the left, we can see all the temperature variations for each stress amplitude. Note that the stress amplitude is being divided by the ultimate strength of material. So this is a percentage, okay? On the right, we can see the stress amplitude increasing height by the stress amplitude, and we can see that, are, that there is a, a, a different slope tendency uh, among this data. So for the three first stress amplitudes, the temperature uh, increasing height is very, very low. Uh, from the, the fourth test, this increases a lot. So we can make a straight line uh, through the highest point of uh, temperature increasing height to obtain the fatigue limit. We performed this data analysis for the seven tests to obtain the fatigue limit of each specimen, of each test. And here we can see the response function, the linear response function with all the fourth coefficients uh, in black. And we can see here the graphic, a 3D graphic. This is a plan, okay, of course, this is a linear, linear relationship. And as we can see, the Fatigue limit dependence on the number of block cycle is very, very small, uh, less than 2%. Sorry, not 2%, but less than, uh, yes, 2% uh, in relation to the ultimate strength. And the same conclusions is obtained for the load frequency. So the load frequency is less than 1.5% regarding the ultimate strength. So this can show to us that if I want to perform the fatigue limit measurement by thermographic method using the minimum value of block cycles and the maximum value of the load frequency, I will perform the thermographic measure, thermographic method from of heat tunnel in a faster way and in a cheaper way because I will use uh, I will spend less time. In the right, we can see the table from the analysis of variance, where we can see that the, the F ratio uh, is very, very low. Then the P value is very high, sorry, is very high, and the P value is very low. So it is a good result. And when we make the calculation of the co coefficient of correlation between the, the response function and the, and the results, this is also a good result, even the adjusted one. So the analysis of variance shows to us that the results are good, could be better, we don't know, but the results are good. So for conclusion. So the conclusion, with the sensitivity analysis performed with Zenov experiment through factor design, it can be concluded that for the study domain, of course, the fatigue limit measured by thermographic method has a little dependence on both factors, number of block cycles and load frequency. The number of block cycles variation has more impact on the functional response than the load frequency, and the interaction between both factors is not significant, is, is negligible. So if I want to perform a faster test using thermographic approach, I can perform with the uh, smallest number of block cycles and under the highest load frequency. I will improve my load test, I will improve my thermographic test. So this is the main conclusion, this is the main result from this, uh, from this project. Thank you very much.